In this video, I'd like to show you how to solve two more equations using the cover-up method. In video number one, this is video number two, in video number one I showed you how to do it with two simpler equations. I'd like to show it to you again with two equations that are a little bit more complicated, but it's still pretty easy. And like I said in the last video, I've watched many students try to solve equations and they get all, they get their minds all turned around, memorizing rules, trying to figure out what procedures to follow, trying to think, well, what am I supposed to do next or how am I supposed to figure this one out? And when I learned uh, the cover-up method, it was like, wow, that's a really cool way to have it make sense. And in the cover-up method, what you do is you can do this with any equation that has just a single variable in it. Um, and what you do is you just cover up that chunk of the equation that has the variable in it and it turns it into a much simpler equation. So for example, if I cover up that center section inside the parentheses, this becomes a simple uh, multiplication problem. 2 times what equals 8? And if you think of it like that, it's really simple. Obviously the thing I'm covering up must be 4. 2 times 4 equals 8. So whatever is underneath this yellow card must be equal to 4. So 6 times x minus 2 must be equal to 4. So if you want, you can just keep that filed away in your mind and keep working, or you could write it down if you want. 6 times x minus 2 equals 4. Let's do it again. Let's cover up another chunk that has the variable in it. Now it turns into a simple subtraction problem. What minus 2 equals 4? Well, clearly, 6 minus 2 equals 4. So whatever is under here must be equal to 6. So in this case, 6 times x equals 6. And you can, again, keep track of this mentally or write it down. 6 times x equals 6. And let's do it one more time. I've got this x here. 6 times what mystery number is equal to 6? Well, 6 times what equals 6? 6 times 1 equals 6. In this case, the x must be a 1. And like I've said, when students think of it like this, these equations tend to make sense. Uh, rather than memorizing rules like, well, I have to, I'm subtracting here, so I have to add two to both sides, or I'm multiplying here, so I have to divide by the same number on both sides, and memorizing rules and steps that don't really make sense, if you just think of this equation in chunks, it makes a lot of sense. Let's try it with one more. I've got negative five times the mystery number, plus 4, all of it divided by 8 is equal to 3, and your job is to figure out what that mystery number must be. Now that probably sounds really complicated, and it does seem complicated, but if we do it in small little chunks, it's not really hard at all. First, let's cover up the top part of this division problem. So now it's something divided by 8 is equal to 3. Now that doesn't sound so bad, so I know 24 divided by 8 is equal to 3. So whatever is on top, whatever is covered up right now, must be equal to 24. So negative 5 times x plus 4 is equal to 24. I can do it again. Let's cover up this chunk that has the x in it. What plus 4 equals 24? Also, that's easy. I know that 20 plus 4 equals 24. So whatever is under here must be 20. So negative 5 times x equals 20. And lastly, negative 5 times what equals 20? Well, a negative times a negative makes a positive. So negative 5 times negative 4 makes positive 20. So this x must be a negative 4. I didn't have to memorize rules. I wasn't memorizing terms like multiplicative inverse and crazy things like that. Uh, it just makes sense as you do it piece by piece, one little chunk at a time. So in this case, x must be negative 4. So I hope that helps. The goal is to have, um, when you're solving equations, is to do it in a way that makes sense. Rather than memorizing things that don't make sense, do it in small chunks in a way that makes sense. And I think the cover-up method is a great way of solving these uh, in a way that makes sense. So this is video number two. I'm, I have one more video. And in video number three, I'm going to show you how you can take an equation that is really big and really nasty looking and still break it into small chunks and solve it quite easily.